Hey everybody, Kendra the Vet Tech here with another study session Saturday. Today we are going to talk about clinical math a little bit more, but before we get started, I would like to put a clarification out there for a mistake I made in the first video. I had the definitions written up for you on my board, and then when I got down to concentration, I had the correct definition written on there, but I misspoke when it came down to it. So the labels that we'll see for concentration come in migs per mil or migs per milliliter or migs per cc or cubic centimeter. So again, I hope you were looking at my board and not totally listening at that point in the video, but those are the two labels that we'll see in regards to concentration of drugs. Moving on to today's lesson, what I would like to discuss today are calculating injectables. So commonly, the procedures that we'll see injectables around are general anesthesia and sedation. So we'll talk about a couple different examples today dealing with those kinds of drugs and how we calculate those. The first one we'll talk about is hydromorphone. So it's one that's commonly used around general anesthesia. So I'll pop my example bottle up here for you to take a look at the label. All right. So if we take a look at this label here, don't get confused by the 40 mg per 20 mil and then in parentheses 2 mg per mil. So if you look down here in this area, it tells you this is actually a 20 mil multiple dose vial. So there's 20 total mils in this bottle. So simply all the 40 mg per 20 mil is telling us is there are 40 total milligrams of the drug in the full 20 milliliter bottle. So the simple way to use that in our math is over here in the parentheses where it says two migs per mil. So we've determined that this drug has a concentration of two migs per mil. So let's say that our example patient weighs 22 pounds. Now we'll go ahead and set up our dimensional analysis. So 22 pounds, there are 2.2 pounds per kilogram of weight. Then the next step is going to be our dosage. A dosage that's used with hydromorphone is 0 0.1 mg per kg. Always make sure that you write your zero in here as the placeholder so that someone doesn't come by and maybe not see your decimal point and think that you're wanting one mg per kg, which is drastically different. So one mg per, or 0.1 mg per kg. And then the concentration we determine for hydromorphone is two migs per mil. And then we wanna know how many mils. So some reviews and reminders from the first one in how the dimensional analysis works. Remembering the rules of our fractions, whole numbers are represented over one. And then we're going to divide by numbers that are on the bottom and multiply by numbers that are on the top. And the way that things work out to get us from pounds into mils are labels that are opposite cancel each other out. So pounds, pounds, kilograms, kilograms, milligrams, milligrams. And then we're left with our mils. So to start us out today, I'll break this down for you guys again. So we're going to start with taking 22 pounds divided by 2.2. So that leaves us with 10 kilograms. All right. So now we know how many kilograms our patient is, but we've got a couple more steps. So remembering our whole number over one, now we have two top numbers. So they multiply. So this puts us at one milligram. And now we're down to a number on the top and a number on the bottom. So we're going to divide. So then that leaves us with 0 0.5 mils. So now our 22 pound patient, we know gets half of a milliliter. So that's a quick review and sort of a real life example for you guys. We saw the label, we determined the concentration, 
and we set up our dimensional analysis and successfully came out with knowing that 0.5 mils is what we're going to administer to our 22 pound patient. So really quick guys, I just also wanna go over the rules of rounding. And the rule of rounding is there is no rounding. So while you're still learning and still learning about the safety ranges and margins on drugs, don't round anything. So I set this first equation up for you guys. So it was really nice, simple, clean math. So it's really easy to go through and see without using a calculator. But I would like to set one up here for you guys with a weight that doesn't come out simple. So let's bump our patient down a couple pounds. Let's say we have a 20 pound patient. So when we're setting this up, it'll be all, all of the same things, the same dimensional analysis, because we're going to set it up with the same drug, okay? So 2.2 pounds per kilogram. Still going to stick with our 0 0.1 milligrams per kilogram. And our drug is the same at 2 mg per mil. And we want to know mils. Now, if you plug this into a calculator and you take 20 divided by 2.2, you end up with one of those infinite run numbers, 9.09090909. So if we start rounding or dropping numbers at that point, your end result may be a little bit different. And while with some larger patients and certain types of drugs that have high safety margins, it wouldn't matter you want to get into a good practice of safety for all of your patients. So if you think about the smaller dogs that will end up with a smaller dose in the end, that 0 0.01 of a mil may make a difference for them. So just always get in the practice of now that we know how the equation works, just running it straight through your calculator and then dropping off a number at the end. So how that works is we're going to, in our calculator, plug in our 20, then hit divide by 2.2, then hit times 0 0.1, then hit divide by our 2, and then our number at the end is 0 0.45 and then lots of numbers. What we're going to do with that is just go out to the number that you can draw up in a syringe. So if we have a one mil syringe, it is possible to draw up 0 0.45. So we're gonna just cut it off right there. No rounding involved, okay? So no rounding at any point in these equations and getting into that habit will make things safer for your patients in the long run, especially the smaller ones. So this is how we look at it in real life and not broken down is big number divided by 2.2 times 0.1 divided by 2, and then we get our number. So now that we've chatted about how that works and that we don't want to do any rounding, especially while we're still learning, let's talk about another example and then another way that we can make sure that our patients are staying nice and safe. So the next example I'm going to talk about is xylazine. And the Example that we're going to use today or practice scenario is we're going to be sedating a pig. So I had this really great combo that I really like to use for pigs that was dubbed by a colleague as piggy magic, which is kind of hilarious. And xylazine is one of the components of that combo that we like to use for pigs. So I'm going to throw up a xylazine vial for you guys to take a look at. All right. So this is xylazine. You can see the, the name... The product name here is just Anna said, but we're looking at the drug name here, xylazine. So xylazine injection, and then you can see over on this side, it says that it is a 20 mg per mil, and then it, this is a 20 mil vial. So 20 mg per mil is our concentration for our xylazine. All right, so let's just say, and again, I'm gonna use easy cheater math, okay? Let's just say we have a 20 pound pig. Okay, 20 pounds, so 2.2 pounds per kilogram of weight. My little cocktail that I like to use for them calls for 2.2 mg per kg, milligrams per kilogram of the drug. So we're gonna go 
two. And then remember our concentration that we just looked at on our label is 20 mg per mil. All right, then we're gonna end up with mils. So you can, if you've been paying attention, you can see how this is a little bit of cheater math. There's some matching numbers, so things come out beautifully at the end. But we're gonna get our calculator. We're gonna plug in 20 divided by 2.2. Then we're gonna go hit the times button, 2.2. And then we're gonna divide it by 20. So now by the laws of dimensional analysis, our pounds are gone, kilograms are gone, milligrams are gone, left with our mils, and that's one mil. Okay, so we're gonna give our piggy one mil of xylazine. Yay! Here's the safety thing, guys. If you're in a mixed animal practice, xylazine comes two ways. You can get it in 20 mg per mil, or you can get it in 100 mg per mil. So let me throw that bottle up here for you guys. So here's a bottle of xylazine. So xylazine injection 100 per mil. You can see right here on the dark blue line. Xylazine 100 mg per mil. Okay, yikes guys. So you're digging around in your drug drawer, you see xylazine, you pull it out, what if you pulled out the 100 mg per mil? Okay, well, let's think about this. Let's write this out for you. So this 20 pound pig, we used our 20 mg per mil xylazine and they get one mil. All right, so we determine one mil. This pig is gonna get 20 milligrams. What if you grab the wrong xylazine? Well, now, according to that label, is 100 milligrams per one mil. So your pig, you're gonna give them one mil of xylazine, but the wrong xylazine, and it's a hundred milligrams. Oh my gosh, you overdosed your pig five times. So another caution for you guys, make sure you're paying close attention to the concentration of the drug that you're using. There are some instances where Acepromazine is used in small animal practices, and it typically comes in a 10 mg per mil concentration, but some hospitals will dilute it down in a sterile vial to a 1 mg per mil. So definitely be sure that you know exactly what the concentration is of the drug that you're drawing up for your patient. So the rule of three is one that's commonly stated and used within veterinary medicine. How I like to practice the rule of three is picking up the vial, saying, okay, hydromorphone, two mg per mil, check my paperwork, yep. Draw it up, check it again, hydromorphone, two mg per mil, yep. And then before I set it down on the counter, I'll just check it one more time. So I always make sure to get my rules of three in. This is a safety thing for you guys. I also had a picture posted on my Facebook page a while back about making sure you read the labels and comparing them. So there is ketamine that comes around that has a red lid and a red label and looks very close to the xylazine. So, you know, checking those again to make sure that you have the right drug is always a good place to start. And that wraps us up for today, guys, with our second part of clinical math, calculating out some injectables. If you have questions or concerns, do feel free to comment below on the video. If you don't want them out there in the stratosphere, always send me a message, or you can email me at kendrathevettech at gmail.com. And if you have ideas, things that you want to learn about via these study session Saturdays, definitely send me a message as well. If you have other things regarding veterinary technology that you'd like to learn about, I do have a podcast. It goes over kind of career paths is kind of where we're going. And I'm starting a mini series on options for education. So definitely check out Kendra the Vet Tech podcast. You can get that on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, or Podcast Addict. Thanks, guys.